since Fiat India announced that it would be bringing the Jeep Grand Cherokee and Jeep Wrangler to India, there's been a lot of buzz and anticipation here as to just how these SUVs would perform in Indian conditions. Team Autocar has already been out driving these cars in their natural environment in the United States and came away pretty impressed. But now finally the Grand Cherokee is here in India and it's time for a first look. And look you will because the Grand Cherokee stands out in any crowd. People first notice the surprisingly slim LED headlamps and the traditional 7 slatted grille. Then they notice the broad shoulders, squared off wheel arches and liberal chrome accents and jaws simply drop. If you are looking to buy a big SUV that's guaranteed to get you noticed, look no further. Just remember to tick the option box for the massive chrome wheels to complete the effect. What is surprising though is the rather generic rear styling, which is made even more obvious by the shattering nose. Open the door and you'll have to climb into the high seats, even with the air suspension on its lowest park setting. The dashboard and center console look and feel like they belong in a premium SUV, though there are some slightly cheaper looking plastic bits in the cabin. The seats are large and comfortable with more than enough adjustment available on both the driver's seat and steering to find a comfortable driving position while the rear bench, though a tad low, is spacious enough with plenty of thigh support. The equipment list, especially on the Summit variant we tested, is impressive with an 8-inch touchscreen, loads of buttons for everything including voice control, heated and ventilated seats, a heated steering wheel, panoramic sunroof, navigation, parking sensors and reversing camera, two USB slots for the rear passenger, it goes on and on. What the Grand Cherokee doesn't have is a third row of seats, so instead you get a 1544 litre boot and space for an almost full size spare. Driving the Grand Cherokee is a largely soothing and invigorating experience thanks to the excellent Mercedes M-Class derived chassis and smooth drivetrain. The V6 diesel engine is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission which has a full sport mode and paddle shifts right here behind the steering wheel. The gearbox itself is pretty quick, it goes up and down the gears very well and when you put it in manual mode and really let the Grand Cherokee rip let me tell you, it does feel very, very, very fast. Though the engine doesn't rev much, the excellent HP-ZF ZF gearbox complements the motor's 237 bhp of power and 58.07 kgm of torque very well. In stop-start traffic, there is a bit of jerk as the Grand Cherokee engages first gear, but once on the move, things smoothen out considerably. 0 to 100 takes just 9.02 seconds, which though slower than the Grand Cherokee's German rivals, is still properly quick for an SUV this size. Now there's no hiding or any way to get around the Grand Cherokee's massive bulk, so you're not really going to go pushing it super hard into corners, but what it does have is excellent ride quality. The flat ride and oodles of grip on offer make the Grand Cherokee a fantastic highway tourer. It's very stable at high speeds, the air suspension makes a good fist of keeping unnecessary body movement in check and the steering is reasonably direct for a 2.4 ton SUV. Now the Grand Cherokee is Jeep's flagship product so you'd expect it to do almost anything you want off-road and to help it along it's got a whole host of features. For example, there's a terrain response system. I call it terrain response system because it looks very, very similar to Land Rover's terrain response system that you can switch from automatic mode to mud, rock, sand or snow. You can raise or lower the air suspension by three stops and you also have proper four-wheel drive low ratio and a locking differential.
We expect the Grand Cherokee to be priced at around 70 lakh rupees X showroom. And as you can see, it's a lot of SUV for that money. Okay, it may only have five seats, but it does have the full bag of off-road tricks at its disposal. And it's also pretty good to drive both in the city and on the highway. Exploring the Grand Cherokee's limits off-road will be the subject of another road test video further down the road. But in the urban jungle, the Grand Cherokee sure feels like it's got the right ingredients to make a mark. But talking of testing limits off-road, Karthik has been doing just that with another Jeep that's just come to India. For some people though, Jeep means basic, tough and full of adventures. Something that certainly has a nice rough and tough personality, something that just screams Jeep. In which case, you should be looking at this, the Jeep Wrangler two-door. So sure, this does look familiar. After all, what else is Mahindra's MM540 and Thar, if not descendants of the Willys Jeep? But it is this Wrangler that is the true heir to the Jeep name and genetics. There's the square shape, the simple round headlamps, and of course, the classic 7-slot grille. Sure, it looks tough, which it is. But this isn't a rustic machine anymore. Now this thing is high off the ground, there's no footboard, so getting in means you've really got to throw your leg in and pull yourself on board. And when you do, you'll find that this is a very kind of tank-like cabin because you've got a high dashboard in the front, small windows, small windscreen, so it really does feel a bit hemmed in in that sense. But tough, definitely in the way it looks and feels simple, but yeah, it has all the trappings you want. Feels very rugged. So the Wrangler has steering mounted audio controls, Bluetooth connectivity and an aircon. But the features that really make this a Jeep are things like this. A roll cage and a removable roof. Just a few clicks and you can plug the roof right back in. You could also take the doors off and that would make for an airy cabin. Ah, that reminds me, backseat space. Now, if you want to use the rear bench, that's an adventure in itself. Flip the seat forward, slide it in front, grab hold of something, put a leg on and haul yourself in. Okay. Slide the seat back, flip it back, yes. Legroom really isn't bad here, but it is quite uh, narrow and uh, the seats themselves are a bit small. Enough of standing around, let's get this American icon on the road and see how it goes. Let's see what this thing does when you take it out to its home turf. Now that it's not raining anymore, the road is pretty much dry, no slush, so the Wranglers just blowing through it all. That's because its wheelbase is smaller than a Maruti Suzuki Swift and its ground clearance of 256 millimeters just dwarfs everything else. Which means departure, approach or ramp over angles are solid which makes this pretty much unstoppable. I threw a couple of extra challenges its way. One point it did get stuck, but once I switched it into four-wheel low, it just pulled itself out in no time flat. With 50% of the torque being sent to both axles, there really is a lot of clawing power. The petrol motor really does seem to be in its element when selected with four-wheel low. 
because there's just so much responsiveness. It's so smooth and silent. It's very enjoyable. When you drive it in dirt, it's like all 70 years of Jeep's history is working to get you through. And that is all inspiring. But you can be sure, most people won't be wandering off into dirty, dusty trails like this. So let's see what the Wrangler is like on tarmac. So this Wrangler comes with a properly impressive drivetrain. It's got a 3.6 liter V6 Pentastar Petrol. And that's mated with a six speed manual gearbox. Ah, that's like music to my ears. But on the road, the experience wasn't what I expected. The thing is, when you put your foot down, you don't get the kind of rush you'd expect from a 280bhp 3.6 litre V6 motor. However, it is quick. 0 to 100 kilometers an hour is dispatched in 8.7 seconds. When you push this motor past 4000 rpm, it starts pulling with more determination. But it's still not really all that quick. But in everyday driving, the punch of the 35.3 kilograms of torque is seriously blunted by the tall gearing. Clearly, this motor has torque. You can amble around it fourth gear at about 20 kilometers an hour and it'll move forward. But it's just that the gearing is too tall for it to feel impressive. As a result, its 20 to 80 kilometer hour run in third gear takes 12.2 seconds and the 40 to 100 run in 4th gear takes 16.9 seconds. In comparison, the 4-door diesel Wrangler takes half the time. So, you really need to work the gearbox to make the most of this Wrangler. Even when it comes to the ride, it takes some getting used to this old-school SUV as its body-on-frame construction and non-independent front suspension has some side effects. You expect this brute to score quite well when you're out on the highway. But the thing is that it has a bit too much body movement. It feels very skittish. So that can get a bit tiring. As a result, it can be a bit tiring on long drives as it can get pretty choppy on rough surfaces. But on the upside, if you're driving in the city, this Wrangler shouldn't be too much of a problem. This won't feel like a truck when you're driving around in the city because the steering is light, it's direct and changes directions quite quickly too. So the Wrangler really does cut an impressive figure. It's head turning no matter where it goes, attracts a lot of attention and uh, really it's very, very capable off-road. But there are some areas where it really can't cut it. I mean, um, in terms of on-road performance, really quite underwhelming for a motor that's got such impressive specs. And uh, of course, the fact that it's a petrol motor really puts it on the back foot, doesn't it? And on the inside, the second row is quite cramped. It's only got two doors. So as a value proposition, it's going to be a hard sell, especially when you consider that it's going to cost about 30 lakh rupees. But for those of you who've got really deep pockets, this is as close as it's going to get when it comes to a pure, cheap experience.